the figure here shows the first four steps in antibody-mediated immunity, also known as humoral immune response. It involves the activation of lymphocytes, which are the T helper cell and B cell. However, for the activation of the B cells, it needs to be activated by an activated T helper cells. Therefore, I am going to explain about the activation of the T helper cell first. Look at this figure. It shows an APC, for example macrophage. It ingests this bacterium. The antigen fragment on the surface of the bacterium, the, the antigen on the surface of this bacterium will be broken down into antigen fragment. The antigen fragment will bind to the class 2 MHC of this APC forming antigen MHC complex. The antigen MHC complex will be presented on the surface of this APC via antigen presentation. T helper cells will recognize the complex. It will bind to it via its T cell receptor. The binding causes the APC to release cytokines to the T helper cells. The T helper cells will release cytokines to itself and it will be activated. Therefore, it will be known as activated T helper cells. B cell independently combine with foreign antigen on the surface of the bacterium, the same bacterium. The antigen will be broken down into antigen fragment. Antigen fragment will bind to class 2 MHC of these B cells forming antigen MHC complex. The antigen MHC complex will be presented on the surface of this B cell via antigen presentation. Now look at figure 3. Activated T helper cells will recognize the complex. It will bind to it via its T cell receptor. The activated T helper cells will release cytokines to the B cells, and B cells will be activated. It will divide, produce clone of identical B cells. Now let us continue at step number 4, where the B cell has been activated to form identical B cells. The B cells will differentiate into two groups, which are the plasma cell and also memory B cells. Plasma cell is a short-lived effector cell. It will secrete the antibody, which circulates via our lymph and blood to the infected region. Once it's encountered with the bacteria, the same bacteria that activate the system earlier, it will bind with the antigen on the pathogen surface, forming antigen antibody complex. The pathogen will be destroyed. The destruction of the pathogen will be discussed more later. What happens to the memory B cells? Memory B cells will circulate within our body fluid for a very long period of time, and if the same bacteria ever reinfect our body, these memory B cells can actually recognize this pathogen immediately and begin a very quick and effective response, or also known as secondary immune response, that can destroy that reinfecting pathogens. How does antibody destroy pathogen? Basically, antibodies do not kill pathogen. Instead, they mark pathogens for inactivation or destruction. In neutralization, antibodies bind to antigen on the surface of the pathogen, which is the virus, preventing the virus to infect the host cells. Other than that, antibodies may also bind to toxin secreted by pathogen, secreted by bacterium, for example, that circulates in our body fluid and prevent them from entering the body cells. In opsonization, the binding of antibody to the antigen of this pathogen, which are the bacterium, will promote phagocytosis by phagocytes, such as macrophage and also neutrophile. In activation of complement system and pore formation, it involves the interaction of the antibody, antigen of the pathogen, and also complement protein that is circulating in our body fluid. When antibody bind to the antigen of this pathogen, for example, bacteria, it will activate the complement protein. The complement protein will form membrane attack complex on the cell membrane of this bacteria. The membrane attack complex will form pores in the cell's membrane of this bacteria. They will be flow of water and ions into this bacteria. The bacteria will swell and later will lead to lysis of this cell.